The deadline for NFL teams to cut down to their 53-man rosters has come, and the Denver Broncos made a few surprising cuts during this time. While they do sit at 53, they will likely make multiple changes in the coming days. This year, when looking at the Broncos roster, it was probably the easiest to project in recent years, with about 45 players pretty much cemented, and there was such an impact in offseason that it was going to be hard to change. Having no preseason was the biggest problem for those fighting to make the roster, as they had no games to strut their stuff. Despite the issues the teams were facing, Denver still actually made a few surprising cuts. At quarterback, they only kept Drew Locke as their starter and Jeff Driscoll to back him up. So for now, they're rolling with just two quarterbacks, but there's a possibility they had a third sometime in the near future. Brett Rippon just didn't do enough in camp, and if the Broncos want him back, he'll have to clear waivers before landing on the practice squad. A third quarterback on the practice squad is expected, but it may not actually be Brett Rippon. There was no surprise cuts at running back from the Broncos and not much surprise at all with only three running backs making it. Melvin Gordon, Philip Lindsay, and Royce Freeman are the current backs. That means that Levante Bellamy and Jeremy Cox didn't make it and they find themselves on waivers. Both could be candidates for the practice squad as Bellamy had a solid camp and Cox was used a lot with the first string offense as a fullback. Seven wide receivers made the Broncos roster which is a bit of a surprise. However, Tyree Cleveland made himself hard to cut after a great camp where he was super consistent. Tyree Cleveland making it as a seventh receiver was really the only question they had as Corlin Sutton, KJ Hamler, and Jerry Judy all were cemented on the roster and Deshaun Hamilton, Tim Patrick, and Deontay Spencer all had solid holds on a roster spot. Jake Butt made the Broncos roster which is a huge success story with all he has overcome so far. He likely sits as the fourth tight end with Noah Fant, Nick Van Nett, and Albert Okwebenam ahead of him. Andrew Beck also made the roster due to his versatility, which that isn't much of a surprise. With five tight ends, however, this is one position that can see a late cut if Denver adds a player from a different position to the roster. No surprise that Garrett Bowles, DeMar Dotson, and Elijah Wilkinson all made the roster. Jake Rogers started camp as a starting right tackle, and now he finds himself cut. With Rogers out, Calvin Anderson finds himself on the roster. He had a solid camp, but of the backup tackles, including Rogers, Anderson was the only one to show true swing tackle viability. On the interior offensive line, there is no surprises Graham Glasgow, Dalton Reisner, Lloyd Cushenberry, and Austin Schlotman all make it. Cushenberry and Schlotman have been battling out for the starting center job. Nathaniel Moody is the lone backup peer guard as Schlotman can play all three of the interior spots. Patrick Morris finds himself on the outside, but he is a candidate for the practice squad due to his experience working with Mike Munchak. Five of the six spots on the defensive line have been set for a while as Jarrell Casey, Shelby Harris, Mike Purcell, Draymond Jones, and McTelvin Ajim were always set to make it. The winner of the sixth spot, however, was known before the cutdown day as Christian Covington was traded away. Once that happened, Demarcus Walker was able to take a breath as his spot was secured. Von Miller, Bradley Chubb, Jeremiah Tauchu, and Malik Reed stand as the lone four edge rushers on the roster. That was always going to be the case, and the only question was if they would keep a fifth. Derek Tuska had a shot to make the roster, but after some Vic Fangio comments earlier this week, it became clear it was unlikely. And with uncertainty of where to play Justin Hollins, it just didn't make sense to keep him either. Linebackers saw the biggest surprise as Denver parted ways with Todd Davis, who has been a solid player for Denver. Alexander Johnson and Josie Jewell are now your starting linebackers going forward. New signing Mark Barron made it as a nickel linebacker and will sub in for Josie Jewell. Joe Jones and the newest linebacker addition Austin Calitro make it for their special teams pedigree. AJ Boye and Bryce Callahan are the two obvious guys at corner, but behind them Devonta Harris and Michael Ojemudia come in as their main backups after both of them had strong camps and ended at a high point. A big congratulations are in order to undrafted rookie Asang Bossy for making the Broncos roster as their fifth corner after a strong camp and consistent camp every day. Devonte Bosby was a surprise cut somewhat after dealing with camp injury, but he could be back on the practice squad. Denver kept only three true safeties with Justin Simmons, Kareem Jackson, and Trey Marshall. Duke Dawson also made it as a corner safety hybrid player, but he played a similar role as Will Parks did last year. Elijah Holder, Douglas Coleman, and P.J. Locke all saw themselves getting cut after a really strong training camp. All three of them could be back with the Broncos practice squad, but it's more likely that we only see two of the three. Special teams was rather simple as Brendan McManus, Sam Martin, and Jacob Bobbin Moyer were the only three at this point. Bobbin Moyer won the long snapper job when Denver parted ways with Wes Farnsworth. Overall, it is a pretty strong roster, but there are some concerns about the depth at linebacker. Over the next few days, there will be multiple changes, and hopefully, they can have a good impact on the Broncos team this season. For Mile High Huddle and Sports Illustrated, I'm Eric Trickle.